Hello and welcome to my first ever YouTube tutorial. I've been wanting to do this for such a long time because you guys have been asking me forever to make tutorials but I simply just haven't had the time. But now I am taking the step, I'm doing it, I'm getting this out there, very excited because I love, I love teaching, I love sharing my skills and knowledge and just in general explaining how to do something so i'm super excited for this and i hope you guys are going to learn something as well please excuse any like bird noises and stuff because i am sitting outside because i didn't really have a good space to do this inside so that is the noises in the background but i hope it won't bother you guys too much so in this tutorial i wanted to start off with something that i think makes a huge difference to your photos it's such a simple tool in Lightroom, but when you know how to use it, it really brings your photos to the next level and can really change the mood and the vibe in your photos. It can really take your photos from a decent shot to something that draws the viewer into the shot and really draws the viewer's eye to whatever you want it to look at. And that is your masking tools or your targeted adjustments in Lightroom. It is your radial filters, your gradial filters and your brush tool that I want to show you guys today and how you can use that to just elevate your photo to the next level. So let me share my screen with you guys. Here we have this cheetah photo that I've already done my basic adjustments on and that, that'll probably be a different tutorial later on. But I want to show you guys how I can bring this photo to the next level with using masking tools and targeted adjustments. Especially something that I get a lot of questions about is how to get those dark black backgrounds to really make the subject stand out. You can't do it with just any photo. Uh, it needs to be a photo that already has quite a dark background. So you've got your targeted adjustments here on the side. Uh, by clicking on that you'll get up these different options and uh, you've got the select subject which basically will select your sub subject and you've got the select sky but we'll get to those a little bit later and, and then you've got these three that basically are your three main tools so you've got your brush which obviously is a bit self-explanatory but it basically brushes <laughs> like this and this red here is basically just showing you where these adjustments are going to affect the photo and down on the slide here you have the size of your brush and you can see how this is, is changing with the size of the brush and then you've got something called feather which is kind of how harsh the lines of the brush is going to be so you see as I'm changing this this outer circle is getting tighter closer to the inner circle and that is basically showing you how much of a fade you're gonna get on your brush so having it all the way up you're getting a bigger fade and having it all the way down you're getting more hard brush if that makes sense so let me show you the difference there to the fade you see how much of a difference that makes then you also got your flow uh, which is a very very helpful tool this basically decides how many times you need to paint on one spot to get the full adjustment so if I paint just one time you see that it's very very little paint and then as I go over more and more times it'll get more and more and more uh, which is super helpful when you're trying to paint in and just get the right amount of adjustments in a specific spot I'll get back to that one later definitely and then density is almost the same thing but just a little bit different so basically it is just how much you'll have but it's not gonna paint when you're painting over and over again it's not gonna get stronger and stronger and uh, you see that so it's just the one time uh, how much one brush is gonna be and then it's gonna stay like that so that's the difference between the flow and the density then you've got your linear gradient a uh, super super helpful tool and it basically is just a line that you can push over like this and it affects the one side of of the line and then you change the also again almost the feathering of uh, of this adjustment by bringing these lines closer to together so basically from this line to that line you've got the f first 50 percent of the shading and then another 50 percent of the shading so this here you've got zero percent 50 100 percent that makes sense and then you can bring it up and down and you can change it around like this move it to affect the whole photo, whatever you want to do. 
Then you've got the radial gradient and this is also super helpful. This is a circle instead. Uh, so it's almost like one brush stro stroke but it's so much easier to move around and again you've got the inner circle that is a hundred percent of the adjustment and then the outer circle is zero percent so in between here you've got the feathering and moving this inner circle in and out you get a bigger feather and a bigger shade and then you can change the circles like this you can also tilt it like that and simply play around with it if I want it to be adjusted on the other side, so on the outside of the circle, then I can go up here, let's make this bigger, and I can click on these three dots and I can click invert and it will affect the outer lines instead, but it works the same way. Super, super helpful. Then good to know as well as that up here on these masks, you will see the white here is basically where the photo is being affected and then same here and then the black is where it's not being affected so just helpful to sh see on these masks what they kind of are doing and getting an overview of, of where they're adjusting the photo okay so let's talk about how we can use these to our advantage when editing a photo so you've got this cheetah photo here and what i don't really like with this is that it one looks a little bit flat so you already got a bit of a dark background which i am going to want to enhance even more and i'll show you how but it, otherwise it's kind of flat which often happens when you're shooting in raw and this is a very good way of bringing that photo out and making it kind of pop out of the photo out of the screen and what i would start with is is doing a linear gra linear gradient and bring that up here on this side of the photo this is something i do with almost all my photos as i check where the light is coming from in the photo and from in this photo it's coming from the right here you can see the cheetah is much more lit up here so then i want to enhance that so i bring this linear gradient and i bring it down to the shadows on the left hand side and i simply just down the exposure on that side so as i'm affecting the photo now and bringing the exposure down this uh, overlay the red overlay will disappear so that i can see what i'm doing and I'll bring that down. I usually bring down the highlights as well because it's a good natural way of bringing down the the darkness on one side without it looking too harsh because if I bring down the exposure too much it will just look super fake. So that's why it's important just be careful with these adjustments. But I bring that down. I bring the shadows down a little bit maybe and I'm happy with that for now. Then I take another linear gradient and I take it from the right hand side and I simply just light that up a little bit to enhance the light that is already coming from that side. And you will see that this makes a very big difference to your photos. Uh, it's such a small simple little trick but it really makes your photo pop and kind of brings more layers to the photo than making it flat. So I'll bring the shadows up here a little bit. Uh, but just slightly because I don't want it to be too much because I still want that dark background there and if I turn this on and off you will see that it already makes a big difference to my photo then I'll take a radial gra gradient I think we should light this side up a little bit but just the face um, because I still want to try to keep this dark background so I'll just put this here light up the face a little bit something like that maybe bring the shadows up a little bit uh, but still keep the half of the face dark because I do want to keep that um, dark side and light side, I like that I would send, then take another radial gradient and I'll make it bigger this time something like that and I'll invert it here we go, I'll probably make it even bigger because now I want to affect the sides and make them darker just bringing that down a little bit maybe bringing down the highlights again maybe I'll put it up so we can include a bit more of that ear something like that and then I think the next thing I'll do is use the brush tool and this is a lot nice little trick that I'll show you guys so take the brush tool and I zoom in on the eye and then down here on if i click on these effect and then custom lightroom has these different presets that is actually super super helpful i usually don't use these on 
on the top here because they just basically has one adjustment but then down here you can dodge and burn and this iris enhance is super helpful so i click on that and then you see how it's just set all these settings has brought up the uh, saturation a bit brought up the clarity and the exposure a little bit and then i paint that in to the animal's eye and you see how that just brings out the colors of that eye. I'll do it on the dark side as well just because I'm sure it'll make a bit of difference. And then I'll take another brush and I'll pump up the highlights and the whites and I'll paint that into the white part of the eye. You see how where the reflection is? I'll just enhance that a little bit. And it seems like it's very very small adjustments but I promise you it makes a big difference to the result. And then take another brush I'll put down the shadows, the blacks a little bit, and this is where I'll add, I'll take the flow down. So that when I'm painting, I can decide how much I want, and if I want more, I'll just go over there again, because this is quite a strong paint now. And I'll just do that on the dark parts of the eye. So let me show you where I've painted now using this. So you see there, but it's not 100% because I've been painting with the flow on just 50%. So when I zoom in now here, you will see what a big difference the, this mask has done to that eye. You see how it just pops. Okay, so now that that's done, I want to use this select subject to just darken the background a little bit but still keep the subject light so when you select this Lightroom will detect where the subject is and give you a very nice mask and uh, you will often have to change maybe a little bit and add and, and subtract a little bit so now for example it shows this branch here on the side as well so I'll just have to take that off uh, but it does do a very good job to give you a base to start off with so now I've selected the subject and then obviously just want to do the background so I'll just do invert and then I'll here on this mask I can subtract or add actually that's what I want to do and then I can add a brush so then here I can paint this branch in and include that into the mask and then here let's see down at the bottom there bottom left uh, it's selected that even though that's the cheetah so I'll just take a minus brush here and take that away there we go so then on this mask I want to just darken the background slightly and bring down any highlights in the background bring down the shadows a little bit just to make the subject pop even more and something that I learned from actually painting in school and that I've brought into my photography and I know there's a, some, a technique that is used a lot in portrait photography and in landscape but I haven't seen a lot of, well a lot of photographers do this but it's a very simple technique that does make a big difference but still looks very natural so if you use the brush tool to dodge and burn that's what it's called when you lighter up highlights and darken shadows and what I do is basically take this brush tool I put the exposure down slightly I put the shadows down a bit and then I put the flow in 50 because I want to be painting I want to be as I go adding on more and more to certain spots to make it look very natural and then I go over on the cheetah darker spots I have in the background here and where basically you want to create a feeling of 3d uh, you want to be painting things that are further away and uh, painting those darker to kind of create that feel of the cheetah coming out of the photo towards you so down here for example on this ear I'll be painting a little bit I'll paint around here paint on this side here I'll do quite a lot because I want this side to be darker as well 
along the cheekbones and down by the neck here I want to create a feeling of this of the nose being closer to us than what the neck is obviously it is but I just want to enhance that feeling and here as well So to show you here now where I've been painting, I'll show you the overlay and you'll see I've painted along the outside of the face to bring to make that feeling of, of that being further away and creating that 3D feeling of the nose being closer and I've painted in little marks, I'll paint them a little bit here, a little bit there and just slightly painting as I go and obviously a lot here and it doesn't have to be very exact you can just kind of go and feeling and take as you go um, but it does make a big difference in the end result so if I turn that off now and then you'll see the before and after how that just makes it pop a little bit more could even now that I've painted I'll also often go and I change the exposure a little bit lower And there we go, I think I'm happy with that. So let me show you the difference that we've made with all these different masks, just using masks on this cheetah. So if I turn this off and then turn it back on again, you see how big of a difference that makes to the photo. And what I really recommend is using a lot of different masks together because it creates much more natural, you have all these layers of masks that overlap each other and creates this faded look where you don't have just one mask that is deciding okay the background is going to be dark and the cheetah is going to be light because that'll just look fake so here I'm using all these masks together to create that natural feel even though I've done a lot to the photo So I hope you guys found that helpful and uh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what other stuff you want to learn about Lightroom. I'll be definitely be doing more of these tutorials uh, because I think it's so much fun and I love editing. I think it is such a big part of my photography personally and I think that is what can really make your photos stand out from the rest. So yeah, let me know if you guys like this and have a great day.